a good way to appreciate the changes in realism is to put realism side by side with romanticism. So you'll see to the left, these are the different hallmarks of romanticism that we looked at over the previous weeks. And to the right, this is where we're going. A big difference is objectivity as opposed to subjectivity. You'll remember with subjectivity, that's when we get the perspective of the author. Now, the writers of realism will be doing their best to give you a truthful, a real representation of life. The second bullet point, the personality of the author is going to slip away. It's going to become much, much quieter as these writers seek reality. And a good way to think about this, about objectivity, is a quote from Stendhal, who's a novelist during this time. A novel is a mirror walking along the road. And what does a mirror do? It's going to reflect what it sees, right? It's not going to filter it. It's just going to reflect. And because of this, a lot of the authors during this time, excuse me, during this time, will write about things in life that had always been there, but the previous writers and artists would recognize that, that they say, well, yeah, that's part of life, but that's really not a good subject for art. So now we're going to see different truths being included in writing and other arts that are ignoble. In other words, it might not be noble, it might be lowly, disgusting, and even evil. So we can see here, this is a painting from this time. This is barge haulers on the Volga, which is the a dominant river in Russia. So you can see that the men here are harnessed to the ship and they're pulling it, right? They're pulling this through a river. And you can take a look here at the different men, see how dirty and just beaten down they are by life. And our eyes are drawn to the figure just left of center, who's young. Notice he's clean right? Compared to everybody else. And notice that he's having a trouble with his burden. And look how upset he is, right? He's upright. He's not leaning into the work. He's oh, it's just become aware of how he's going to spend the rest of his life. And you can look to the figure, right? So now our eyes move from him to the left, that figure that's down. He's looking directly into our eyes, Right, the barge hauler looking down, leaning into his work with his hands clasped together and a look of resignation, utter defeat. The other barge haulers are looking down, heads down. Oh, what a terrible life. But hundreds of people, that's, that's how they live their lives. Oh, that's so depressing. What's happened to the idealism Everybody that we saw in Romanticism, and the answer is, it's gone, right? Now, life, this is, a, people lived like this before in Romanticism, but authors of that time weren't concerned with it because they were concerned with giving an idealized portrait of life that came about because of subjectivity, right? Filtering it through the author's perspective. Another work of realism in the visual arts, The Drowned. Yeah, people, you know, sure, people in, throughout history have committed suicide by drowning when they encounter rough times. But before, nobody would think about doing a painting of a corpse discovered in low tide and the watchman just quietly contemplating the corpse until 
you know, the undertakers can come and carry it off for hopeful identification. If not, then it's just going to be buried in Potter's Field. Wow, I know. Kind of depressing. But that's realism. That's life. And that's where we're headed. During this time, the novel becomes the dominant genre. So what that means, unlike Romanticism, when the dominant genre was poetry, during this time, if people had an idea that they wanted to share with a mass audience, they would write a novel. And if you look at this short list here, you'll see there's some heavy hitters who are writing during this time. Drama experiences a rebirth as well. And what these authors are doing in realism is they're interested in depicting everyday life and the sometime banal commonplace activities and experiences instead of romanticizing these ideas and influencing them under the imagination of the author. Now, it's an interesting fact a lot of people say, that's not true, Mr. K, but it is. A lot of the authors during this time were put on trial for what they wrote. Many of them were fined, and some of the works were even banned because it was so shocking and so troubling to the populace. So we'll continue taking a look at realism and symbolism in the next lecture.